Welcome to this course preview on Collaborative Business Planning from Category Management Knowledge Group. Everyone talks about this, but what is collaborative selling and how do you get there? Collaborative business planning results in a partnership between retailer and vendor that is built on mutual trust and win-win solutions. Here are the learning objectives for the fully accredited course. We won't cover all of these in the course preview, but we'll give you some new considerations about strategic selling. The market is changing every day. Both retailers and vendors are consolidating. Drug stores are selling fresh food. Food stores and convenience stores are selling prepared meals. And retailers and vendors are selling in the omni-channel. There's more data. Global retailers are expanding. Walgreens is now a prominent retailer in Europe. The shopper is changing, much more educated, and they know what they want, driven by the Internet. The consumer in many regions of the world is getting older, more diverse, and there are greater divides between the haves and the have-nots. The changing market and shopper has resulted in changing partner needs and expectations between retailers and vendors. Resources are limited due to downsizing for both retailers and vendors, while requirements have increased due to increased data complexity and the more complex shopper. Finally, the Category Management Association has developed industry certification, which has also led to increased access to training for both retailers and vendors. At the end of the day, all of these changes have resulted in the need for a new, more collaborative approach to category management. When you look at the traditional sales approach, it needs to change. A simplified version of this traditional approach is when internal teams research and analyze the consumer and market opportunities, resulting in marketing plans that include new products and new ways to connect to their brand consumers. Sales puts a spin on the initiative and develops a presentation to sell in to retailers. The category manager or buyer at the retailer listens to the opportunity presented by the vendor and makes decisions based on internal retailer processes and decision making. So what's the issue with this more traditional sales approach? It doesn't consider the retailer or their shoppers needs. The opportunity is to move to a more collaborative approach between retailer and vendor partners. In a perfect collaborative world, retailers and vendors would work together to find shopper solutions that align with their internal organizational goals and objectives. Moving to a more collaborative approach requires many different elements, including trust, resources, data, aligned strategies, and other elements. To get there, the first step is to strategically prepare your organization internally for collaboration. We'll cover this later in the course. When we were researching collaboration, we found this great quote from Eric Schmidt of Google. In net, collaboration isn't about a group getting along and having nice conversations. We then found a great definition that we then modified for category management. In NET, collaboration is highly diversified teams working together inside and outside a company with the purpose to create value by improving innovation, customer relationships, and efficiency while leveraging technology for effective interactions in the virtual and physical space. Category Management Knowledge Group has been heavily involved in collaborative endeavors over the past several years, and we've even created our own collaboration model. Just like there are tiers of category management, there are also levels of collaboration to consider. The requirements for collaboration include data and tools, research and personnel. The level of your internal capabilities in each of these areas drives the outputs from your collaborative efforts. In Level 1 collaboration, there's limited access to data, 
limited shopper and market research, and limited and or non-dedicated resources required with one-to-one -one types of relationships. The output from Level 1 collaboration is tactical or transactional solutions. In Level 2, there's more access to data and research, and there are some dedicated resources across functions with some multifunctional relationships. The output from this level of collaboration is strategic category solutions. In the highest level of collaboration, there's rich data, advanced shopper and market research, and extensive and well-trained personnel across a multifunctional team. The output from this level of collaboration is shopper-focused solutions. Based on this model, not all collaboration is created equal. Consider what level of collaboration is your organization at, and where do you want to be? Many organizations have collaboration as a pillar in their overall strategic plan, but haven't clearly defined who, what, or how they will get there. We've broken this course into four different segments, each with important collaboration considerations. In NET, you need to consider your internal organizational strategies and processes, and how and what needs to change there before you can move to a more collaborative approach with your partners. We'll start with looking inside our own companies to determine where the opportunities are to prepare for collaboration. Retailers have some strategic choices to make related to their target customer the format that they plan to use, and the basis for competitive differentiation. These strategies need to be clear and concise, and typically come across in the form of principles, guidelines, and processes. Once the retailer strategy has been developed, senior management needs to communicate the strategies, including rules, principles, and processes for decision-making. Internally, the communications need to include multifunctional teams, including category management, retail operations, logistics, as well as other departments that need to understand the strategies. They also need to communicate externally to vendors, not sharing all strategies, but giving them guidelines on what's important to understand about the retailer. In more collaborative partnerships, retailers and vendors will share more strategic information than in a less collaborative one. Vendors also have to make strategic choices and plan internally, very similar to retailers and once again have a set of principles, guidelines, and processes embedded in the organization to ensure that they're understood and executed. Sometimes vendors can forget to define some of their overall strategies, including the necessary guidelines and processes, and allow their priorities and choices to be driven by the business development teams. In the full course, we walk through two examples of areas where vendors can be more strategic in their internal approaches. They relate to the assortment and shelving internal work, and the innovation process. The two should ultimately go hand in hand. Let's take a look. The traditional assortment process for vendors looks like this. Catman teams typically get requests for assortment and shelving work to be done in two ways. First, through innovation from marketing. Marketing has created this great new product, and now category management analysts have to figure out how to fit them into the category. Or secondly, there's a request for work to be completed in assortment and shelving, whether it's through a top-to-top -top senior management meeting, an internal request, or a request from the retailer, or part of the category captain requirements. Then the category management retail teams, so the analysts on Kroger, Walmart, and so on, complete the analysis specific for their retailer, and hopefully follow that up with a scorecard and post-evaluation. This results in many different iterations of assortment and shelving work 
that require tons of resources and time to complete, and doesn't have a common thread or strategic component to it from the vendor shopper or category perspective. In the rest of the course, we review the multifunctional resources for both retailers and vendors and what's required from these teams. Then we cover how to move from collaboration to joint business planning and go into a lot of detail about the joint business planning process. Here are some final thoughts to consider about joint business planning. Remember, it's a journey, not a destination. It should be approached with a win-win approach. Not just one party should win in a joint business plan. Trust isn't automatic. It's something that is slowly built between retailer and vendor. Don't try to plan every piece of the plan. Make sure that the objectives are shared and smart. And be flexible and open to new ideas and new ways of doing business. Joint business plans can help to achieve better results more quickly with a well-defined joint offer, actionable target, markets and customers, a clear action plan, and well-defined roles and responsibilities. We've now completed this course preview on Collaborative Business Planning from Category Management Knowledge Group. I hope you enjoyed it, but now where do you go from here? If you're interested in purchasing this popular certified course or working with us to help you determine training opportunities for you, your team, or your organization that will ultimately lead to a new level of collaboration, please contact us. We don't believe in a one-size-fits-all approach and will consult with you to ensure that what we deliver meets your specific needs and business issues. We hope to hear from you soon. Have an excellent day.